G'day everyone! Today I'm going to be transforming myself into Cure Flora from the anime series Go Princess Pretty Cure. I made this cosplay for the World Cosplay Summit 2018 which was held in Nagoya, Japan. Let's begin with the simplest layer, the short shorts. These were made with a thick jersey material and are just a basic shorts pattern with some elastic in the waist. They were mostly used for vanity's sake as the skit that accompanied this outfit required me to do a fair amount of kicking. Fun fact, in the anime, the shorts that Cure Flora wears is actually fluffy, but as this is actually a quick change outfit, I wanted something that was form fitting and easy to get a big skirt over quickly. Speaking of skirts, let's put on the next layer. This is the short skirt version of this outfit. Unfortunately, in this video, I'm unable to show you the big version of this as it's tucked away in the very back of my closet. However, I think I love the short skirt version more anyway. It was made with a base layer of a petticoat and then a butt pillow, both of which have their own tutorials, which I will link below. Over the top is a skirt that I patterned in three parts, all made out of silk. It does up on the side with press studs for ease of taking off. It is decorated with a satin stitch applique where the two pinks meet, and of course, rhinestones. It may look like a simple skirt, but all in all, it took me about 50 hours of labor time to construct. I am not even remotely joking. Next is the shoes. Flora has these weird semi cowboy looking boots, but the side fold open to what I think are meant to be similar to like a flower petal. These boots were actually character boots that I bought, but I ended up cutting into them, ripping them apart a bit, and then adding new silk bows and adding some puff faux flowers. I'll talk more about those later on. Next, the wig base. This is a chibi wig in fairy blonde from Arda Wigs. I used the excess that I cut off from the pigtails to form new wefts, which I sewed on top here to form her little bun. I think I call it the onion. I also dyed some of the wefts of this wig to this pink color and sewed those into the wig. And those points in the fringe, they stayed pointed because I glued the ends together. I found that part probably to be the most stressful part of this entire cosplay. It was also one of the very last parts of this cosplay that I did, so go figure. Now the necklace. The necklace is made up of some puff flowers which were made by sandwiching a layer of wadding between two layers of silk and then manipulating the fabric so it makes four petals. Then in the center I added some gold buttons. You may also notice that there's other puff flowers on this costume and some of them have glass stones rather than buttons. Next are the earrings. These make me a little sad because one of them broke just as I was filming this. Don't worry, it's fixable. The earrings are made in the same manner as the necklace with a bit more detail. Next, the crowning glory of this cosplay and possibly one of the most difficult things I've ever constructed. The bodice or rather the overdress. Firstly, let's talk about the materials. What you are seeing is pretty much all silk. Even the lining is silk. It is decorated with four bows, two different laces, puff flowers, and so, so many rhinestones. Padding this out was a challenge to say the least because in anime, gravity doesn't seem to exist, nor does normal seam placement. The entire piece, except for the sleeves, are interlined with a buckram. Yep, you heard that right, buckram. The stuff normally reserved for hats and bags, etc. I did actually try a few different interlining tactics like horsehair braid, but it just didn't cut the mustard. Only buckram seemed to do the trick of still being able to move with the fabric, but also hold its gravity defying shape to create those waves. The bodice itself closes with a mixture of a heavy duty metal zip, buttons and multiple press studs. Including the multiple mock-ups I did for this part of the cosplay, the bodice slash overdress thing took me just shy of 100 hours of labor time. I have made full cosplays in less time than that. But it was a labor of love and out of everything I've ever made, I think I'm most proud of this one piece. Now onto the rest of the wig. I have four long curly ponytail clips from Arda Wig in Fairy Blonde. I dyed the ends pink. I purposely opted to do the bulk of the hair as ponytail clips because Cure Flora has a very, very full head of hair. And I thought it might be wise to have the option to remove some of that hair if I got a really bad headache, which yes, did happen. 
Once again, anime does not understand how gravity works and of course, every woman has long hair that is very, very full. Okay, home stretch now, the cuffs. These cuffs are normally worn over white gloves to give the appearance of them all being one piece. But for the skit, I ended up removing the gloves so that I had good grip. They were patterned out and constructed out of silk and you guessed it, buckram. The closures are press studs and the cuffs are decorated with rhinestones and a puff flower on each. And there she is, Cure Flora in all of her glory. This was indeed one of the most complicated, if not the most complicated build I've made to date. All up, along with the big skirt not seen here, Cure Flora took well over 400 labour hours to mock up, construct and decorate. Overall, I love her and I'm really proud of her. There is something really fabulous about working on such a big project over the course of an entire year. And hey, I even flew to Singapore to buy all the silk, as it actually worked out cheaper than buying it here in Australia. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching me put on a project that indeed had blood, sweat and tears throughout its construction. If you want to see more content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And just before we finish up, I would like to give a massive shout out to my patrons, especially those on the sewing machine tier. They are Justin Ghostly, Caroline Drakeo, Return of the T-Shack and Road Threads. Thank you, as always, for your support. I will see you all next time.